Okay, going live now, and I'm just um, seeing that people are coming into the event. I'll just give this a moment as people are entering the link. Okay. All right, all right, seven viewers, eight viewers, great. Um, hopefully as people get on, they'll be able to uh, see my, my screen and be able to um, access this recording. So I am gonna record this event. Today I'm talking about how to find funding for any career goal. And I'm specifically gonna show you secrets to using the ProFellow database, which includes funding opportunities for professional development, study, going abroad, advancing your social enterprise, just a wide number of career goals. So to get started, first I'll just introduce myself. Hi, my name's Dr. Vicki Johnson. I'm the founder and CEO of profellow.com. And myself, I'm a four-time fellow and I've traveled all over the world on professional fellowships. I once worked in the field of emergency management and public health. And so through fellowships, I was really able to advance my career. I started early on as a New York City urban fellow working in New York City government. And that's sort of how I became engaged in the emergency management field. I was there um, starting in 2001 during 9-11. And then I really became interested in the, the field of public health. And uh, my next fellowship was pursuing a self-design project in Germany as a German chancellor fellowship. So this was a really unique opportunity to spend a year exploring a topic that was of interest to me. And I made a great professional network and really had an adventure abroad. I then worked for several years in DC and I also did a Herbert Scoville Jr. Peace Fellowship in Washington, DC. So I had a six month opportunity to work at a leading think tank and understand the world of think tanks and the, the cross between academia and public policy. And then after uh, several more years of working, I also pursued a master's degree in the UK and I pursued a PhD in New Zealand. Uh, I actually went to New Zealand on a seven month research fellowship and was only intending to do research, but because I was working in the disaster field, uh, I was there during the Christchurch earthquake of 2011 on my, my research fellowship. And through that, I entered into a PhD program there and received a full funding package to complete my PhD at Massey University. So since all of that, um, in 2011, uh, my husband Ryan and I decided to start ProFellow because we wanted to create a centralized source of information about fellowships. For me, I always was searching far and wide for these unique and extraordinary funding opportunities. And they used to be very difficult to find. Um, they were really known by word of mouth. I used to do really deep internet research to try to find some of these opportunities. Uh, and finally, I said, you know, that enough is enough. I wanna create a centralized source of information. So essentially anything that's in the profellow.com database uh, we call it a fellowship, but it's a pretty broad term for any funding award that is competitive, merit-based, short-term or time-limited in nature, and it gives you an opportunity to do something exceptional. So everything that you find in the ProFellow database will have some funding attached to it. We do um, sometimes advertise tuition-based programs and that sort of thing uh, separately in our advertising sections but everything in the free database will have funding. And so it's a great place to find opportunities for a wide, wide range of career goals. I'm also gonna show you today how to sort of think about your goals creatively. Sometimes people have a very kind of narrow idea of what they wanna fund. And actually fellowships can be used to be creatively applied to a lot of different goals. So sometimes you might have a goal to do one thing, but what you really need is the time and the funding to give you the runway to do uh, something else completely. So, okay, let's just get right into it. Um, this is being recorded. So for anyone who's missed this, we'll have a recording available or if you need to leave early. I also wanna mention, I do have lots of questions that were listed in the events page where the RSVP is. At the end, I'm gonna kind of give you some examples using those for finding fellowships uh, that meet those criteria that people had posted but you can also post questions on the YouTube chat box. So at the end of this, I'm also going to go to the YouTube chat and just see what questions have been posted there. And if for some reason I didn't get to your questions due to time or uh, technicality, you can also message me inside ProFellow Academy, which is at profellow.mn.co. 
Okay, so let me do this. I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you the Profello database. So if you could just give me a moment. Okay, this here at profello.com slash backslash fellowship is our database. Now to access our free database, you do need to create a free account at profello.com. So if you um, just go to our main homepage here, you'll be able to, um, you can click get started. Uh, also, if you're not logged in, you, you'll see a sign up or a login button over here. And that once you sign up and put in your information, which helps to um, build up your profile to, to show what you're looking for, it will take you right to the fellowships page. And this is where you can find our database. Now, over time, we have added fellowships. Uh, often we're adding them at a clip of about three to five new fellowships per week. Um, right now we have over 1,100 opportunities listed in the database, so that's a lot. Um, so it's always good to kind of narrow down what you're looking for by using the filters over here. And there's also a nifty uh, keyword search bar up here. So just to get started, let me just show you what these various filters do. First of all, at the top here, uh, you have a favorites bar. So you can favorite fellowships, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, but you can also use your profile filters. So in your profile, when you filled out your form, you would have been asked to put in things like your disciplines, your work experience, uh, and that sort of thing. And so if you click this, profile filters, it'll actually auto-populate all of your filters. Now for me, I'm somebody that wants to know everything that's out there. So I like to start fresh uh, with no filters, looking at the 1,100 opportunities. Now, the first thing, many of you uh, are US and, and some of you are from outside the US. So um, sometimes I get questions like, well, I can't find fellowships for my citizenship. We do have a bit of a skew toward um, fellowships for American citizens because we're a US-based organization. However, there are tons of opportunities in the database for all citizenships. So the first thing you might wanna do actually is put in your citizenship. So if you were United States, you could put in that. And as you can see, that actually will narrow down some of the ones that are not for US citizens, where I would not be eligible. Now for fellowship type, we have some pretty broad categories. So um, pro the professional category is for fellowships that allow you to do something like a full-time work placement at an organization, or perhaps you're doing a self-designed project that has no sort of study or academic component to it. Sometimes it can also be used for the purpose of doing an independent research project. Uh, sometimes they'll call it research even if it's not something for PhDs. So that may also be put under there. Essentially professional can be anything that is uh, not going toward a master's or doctoral degree or undergraduate degree. So professional has a lot of fellowships that are um, put under this very broad category. We even have part-time fellowships, virtual fellowships, uh, super short, you know, just a few week long fellowships. So all of that will be put under professional. We also have um, these one, and I'm sorry, these are not in, these are kind of in a random order here, but we also have fellowships for undergraduate study. So for those of you who are enrolled undergraduate students, there are fellowships that would be categorized under this, which could be either toward doing research during your undergraduate studies, um, doing a study abroad component, or doing uh, even a summer fellowship, although we have a separate summer fellowship uh, button just for that, since there's a whole category of those. There's also graduate study. This is generally for people doing a master's or a kind of a non-doctoral graduate study, um, but there is also a doctoral study button down here too. So if you are doing a master's or a PhD, you could look at both. Um, if you know you're just doing a master's, I would suggest looking for graduate study fellowship types. Um, if you're looking to do a PhD or already in a PhD program, look under doctoral study. Programs like uh, law degrees, medical degrees, sometimes uh, they get categorized under both. So, you know, for example, a law degree is a, is a type of doctorate but sometimes people think of that as a master's degree. So think of, uh, just to keep your, your search broad, I would suggest uh, if you're looking for, say, funding for law school or um, some for something that is called a doctorate but may be more considered a master's, 
look under both. And like I said, there's also a type called summer fellowship. And this is generally, summer fellowships are generally for enrolled students. So if you are currently in your last year of studies as a senior or your second year of your master's or even your first year of your master's, these fellowships are typically for enrolled students or for people who are about to graduate and it's that first summer right after your graduation. So um, it will be bucketed under that. Um, sometimes if there's a fellowship that just lies in the summer but it's for a professional, it may be in this category as well, but it will also be tagged as professional. So you don't need to, to go there if you, if you just wanna look for professional fellowships. So that's kind of the explanation of the types here. Um, down here in discipline, again, we have super broad disciplines, education, social sciences, uh, technology, et cetera. So um, we like to use broad categories because uh, actually it's some fellowships, it's very difficult to put them into small subcategories. There are many fellowships out there that are multidisciplinary in nature. So if you're doing a very small subtopic, subdiscipline, or uh, some sort of niche area of study, it's generally not good to look for fellowships specifically for say, urban architecture, or specifically for say, um, you know, breast cancer research, because there is generally kind of uh, broader fellowships where you could certainly do a research project or a study in one of those areas, but you won't find those keywords specifically tagged to that fellowship. So you know what, if you're uh, looking to do breast cancer research, for you, I would say look in the medicine and health sciences. Now, or let's say you're doing public health, that would also kind of go in medicine and health sciences. So if you put that in, one way though to get down to see if there's fellowships in your subdiscipline is by using the keyword search up here. So let's say that was public health. You can type in public health, click enter, and this will include all of the fellowship listings that have the word, or the words I should say, public health in them. But again, there are other fellowships where you could potentially do a public health related project that isn't tagged public health. So again, I, I say, you know, keep it broad when you have the time to really peruse the database. I'm just gonna take that out for a moment so I can show you uh, some other things here. Now for location, again, very, very broad categories, Africa, Asia, Europe. And we do this only because often people are looking in regions or looking to go uh, just, or they just wanna travel internationally and are pretty open to topics. And it would be pretty difficult to put several hundred um, different uh, countries in this list. Uh, you could do it. But what we found was easier was to do something like Europe and then if you uh, said, you know, specifically, I want to see what's in Germany, in the keyword search, you can put Germany and see what comes up. So again, I've got my medicine discipline uh, chosen, Europe and citizenship requirement. And there's actually 15 results where someone may be saying public health, looking to do a fellowship in Germany, 15 potential funding opportunities to do that. So uh, the other thing we have down here is work experience. Now we have very, again, very broad categories, less than five years, five to 10 years, and 10 plus years. The reason we haven't really specified this down to say one years, two years, five years, 20 years, is because a lot of fellowships don't have age requirements. I know people feel that often the fellowships are sort of skewed toward younger people. And it is true, there is a lot of fellowships that are geared toward recent graduates or people under age 35. However, there's a ton of fellowships um, for various goals that don't have any age requirement. So putting in your work experience actually sometimes can sort of uh, narrow down your search a little bit too much. Let's say you have um, 10 plus years of work experience. This is gonna narrow it down to those that are specifically looking for people with more than 10 plus years of work experience. However, if you were that person in public health uh, looking to go to Germany to do a, a public health related fellowship, I would say keep this off and look through all 15 results because some of these, like I said, won't have an age requirement. And so I would hate for you to miss out on an opportunity because you filter too much. So keep your search a little bit broad. Work experience is good if you know specifically you want a fellowship that's only targeting uh, a certain age level. So you can do that um, if, if you want to take a look and just see what it comes up with. So that's kind of broadly how to use this. Now, I really like to encourage people to use the keyword search if they're looking for uh, fellowships in certain disciplines or fellowships in certain countries. Um, you know, as you're doing this, you know, let's say you're looking for a fellowship in Nigeria. 
see there's no listings oh because that's because i have the europe location on there sorry if i put in africa and i put in nigeria there's no results but let's see if i just take out nigeria and uh i see what i could do in africa in medicine health sciences now um i put in nigeria but it may be that not that you couldn't do do one of these fellowships in Nigeria. It, it's just that the word Nigeria is not on the listing. So again, um, we purposely made the listings nice and succinct so that you could skim through, take a look, and think to yourself, hmm, you know, this, this generally sounds like something I could be interested in. And you can save it to your favorites here to refer back to later. If you favorite something on this little heart button here, um, it'll show up in your favorites when you click that button there. So this is the one I just favorited and here it is. Now to get out of this list, you have to unclick the favorites again. But I should also show you that if you find something like this, you should also click on it because there will be a little more information here on the page, including uh, deadlines, whether they're estimated or confirmed, you know, it will show some keywords, but also the best part is you just go right to the website. So this will, um, this is where you really want to go to get the really nitty gritty details about the fellowship. The listings are um, sort of limited in that they uh, don't, you know, they don't show all the information that you may need to know to see if you're eligible to apply. Sorry, this is taking so long to open, but this is what you want to do. You want to go to the fellowship's website and then really dig deep and look and see what it is that they're looking for. And again, if you go to here and you say, ah, oh, this is awesome. I'd really love to save this to my favorites. You can just click it here. I want to mention about the deadlines as well. So a lot of fellowships have a whole variety of deadlines. Some people have the same, some programs have the same deadline every single year. Uh, a lot of programs change the deadline every year, but it's generally in the same month. Um, so when you see the word estimated here, that means this deadline was based on last year's deadline and it has not been confirmed yet. So uh, this fellowship, had a November 30th, 2018 deadline. So when December 1st rolled around, we updated it to November 30th, 2019. But we mark here that it's estimated because we're not 100% sure that's the deadline. Now we do go through and we check the deadlines um, uh, three, two, and one month in advance to, to just keep checking the website. We get email notices, the organizations sometimes contact us. So we try to keep that as updated as possible. But I would encourage you, if say the fellowship program has, if you're super interested in the fellowship program, I would encourage you to get on their mailing list if they offer one on their website. That way you will be immediately notified by the organization if, um, if they have an open application. If for some reason this group has a fellowship uh, opening and, and it has a March deadline this year, uh, the best way to get notified, you know, it says, you know, for queries, write to this person. So get on their mailing list, that way you'll always be up to date. We are working to you know, create some new features on the site to, to notify people by email about fellowships that they've bookmarked and fellowships that uh, have upcoming deadlines. We're working on that and I hope to launch that this year. Uh, but that that's sort of one way to just make sure you never lose track of, of fellowships that you're super, super interested in. Now, you guys had some very specific questions about certain fellowships. I'm just gonna look at this list of questions that I had copied from Profilo Academy. Uh, hold on just a minute. Let me just pull that up for my own reference. Specific questions oh, sorry. about certain fellowships. I'm that pulled up the YouTube page, sorry. Okay, so uh, one of the questions was, are there grants that train ele elementary teachers in STEM with professional development? Yes, so for uh, teachers, uh, if you're in STEM, you know, you could put in uh, science, technology, um, engineering, medicine is still in science. Let me take out location because I'm not sure it could be anything. I'll even take out citizenship because I'm not quite sure your citizenship at this moment. Um, but I would use, I would suggest using the keyword teachers because we've used that as a keyword. And you'll find uh, some fellowships in here for teachers that you can search through. If you clear the filters, let me just do this too. If you clear the filters and just put in teachers, uh, you'll also see there is fellowships here that are targeting teachers. Now, sometimes if it's for STEM, but it's for teaching, it might only be categorized under education. We're trying to you know, improve these as every year with these um, deadlines. So 
for teachers, look, there's only 39 results. So I would suggest take the time to go through and take a look at all 39 results. Bookmark the ones to your profile that might be of interest. There's definitely a lot of interesting fellowships here for teachers to spend uh, their, their summer off to go somewhere for professional development. There's even, um, I remember there's policy fellowships for teachers to go to DC and work in public policy development, um, teachers in musicology. So there's a lot of really interesting um, teach, te teacher fellowships here. Uh, the next question was, um, I'd love to hear more about opportunities for those in higher education leadership. Well, again, I would probably say this is in the discipline education and, uh, you know, I think higher education is one of our tags, but just try higher and see what comes up. And um, this will be, let's do professional as well, if you're looking for like a professional development program. And there is a number of uh, fellowships here that talk about higher education. You know, like the Fulbright, Fulbright Schumann International Educator Grants. These are people that work in higher education that want to do um, research projects on a US EU perspective on global issues within international higher education. There's the uh, University Innovation Fellowship at uh, Arizona State. That's a really interesting opportunity for higher ed leadership. Uh, there's there's ones for young African leaders. Um, so again, go through there, try higher ed. Sometimes people put higher education or higher ed. I just like to put in the word higher because I think higher education will come up if it's in that um, description. But you can fool around with this. If you were, say, looking, let's say you were looking for a PhD program in education uh, because you're already a higher education leader, you could look in doctoral study and look in education and you'll find um, doctoral fellowships, uh, like a fully funded PhD in education and educational leadership at Drexel University. So those are just a few suggestions for that question. Okay, let me see, next question was, uh, I'm interested in about funding for, to change careers and work in research. Okay. We do get a lot of questions about career change. Um, and we have started using, because of that, we started using the tag career change. So some of these are, these would be specifically for career changers, people who want to change careers. Um, again, though, there might be other ways, depending on what you want to do, Let's say you've been working professionally and now you're really interested in getting research. Um, to make a career change, it might be that you need to get a doctoral degree, an academic degree. So in that case, I would suggest, um, just like I last said, you know, look at, rather than you know, using a keyword like career change, try looking for a doctoral study and then look in whatever your field of, uh, you know, let's say it's in business. You can find doctoral fellowships and fully funded doctoral programs in business um, using doctoral study in business. So depending on what you wanna change into, you wanna find the right award depending, is it that you need a, a different degree to make that career change, um, which may be necessary if you don't have any research experience to speak of, or if you just wanted to do, um, maybe you just wanna do a self-designed research project. Another uh, keyword that we've used um, to kind of filter out those opportunities for self-designed projects, which include research, um, is self-designed project. You can put that in there and there's 27 results. Some of these are for recent graduates, but many are also, uh, this is one that I did actually, the Ian Axford Fellowship in Public Policy, the one I mentioned, um, that was for a self-designed research project in New Zealand. And at that, that time I did not have a PhD, I just had a master's. So uh, yeah, try some of those keywords, self-design project, look at doctoral awards and career change is another one. Another question was, um, let's see here, strategic planning in K through 12, everything, rural or semi-rural districts. So this could be interesting. So yes, we do have a lot of education um, related fellowships. So if you looked at education um, and let's say you wanted to look at professional, you could, there's a lot of, there's a lot of results in, in the field of education. So for um, K through 12 is one of our, um, one of our keywords. So this is a way that you can kind of narrow down things that are in K through 12. Now K through 12 might mean that you need to be a K through 12 teacher, but it could also mean that you want to do K through 12 research. So I would look through all of the fellowships in the professional uh, realm in education for those that are related to that. 
Now for strategic planning, I know um, one that is in strategic planning or getting into strategic roles in education is education pioneers. This one is uh, for people who want to get into the more operational side of education, the K through 12. So that might be one that you want to consider if you're if you're looking at that strategic operational professional development. Uh, let's see, another one was research grants for developing countries in education and culture. Okay, so let's see. I'm not sure what country you're from, but again, let's say you're coming from uh, you know, I don't know, developing country can be defined in many different ways, but let's see. Uh, I know we have a lot of people from India and Nigeria, Pakistan. Uh, we have large audiences of people from those countries on our database. So let me just see here. You said Africa. Let me just put in Africa and I'll put in um, Nigeria as a possibility. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That would be location in um I'm sorry, I'm doing this wrong. Let's say you're from Africa, but you wanted to do professional development. So let me put in Nigeria down here. You say I'm from Nigeria and you wanna do a fellowship in education. Culture could also be maybe in social sciences and uh, liberal arts perhaps, or even, it could even be in creative arts. So I might put in those. Now this is a lot of uh, results, 329 to look through. Let's say you wanted to do a professional uh, fellowship as a Nigerian. And let's say you wanted to come to the US to do that fellowship. Then you would put in North America, which includes the US and Canada. And there's 113 results um, for possibilities. Again, still a lot to look through, but let's say if you just wanted education, um, let's see what comes up here. There's 34 results. So, um, this is one we just put in, and I don't know if your age is uh, under 35, but you know there's some there's a whole range of different opportunities. The Atlantic Council does a Millennium Fellowship for young leaders, and here they're taking a cohort of uh, young leaders from all over the world to go and interact and have um, you know a sort of a transformational cohort experience with other people, and they go on a really unique, fully funded study tour this coming year for this the coming cohort that they're recruiting for. It's going to Colombia. So this is something that might not be specifically in education and culture, but to take you know part in an opportunity like this would certainly be life-changing and a, a really unique thing to have on your resume and as you're working on uh, a social enterprise or toward a certain degree. There's also Fulbright Awards that might be relevant to what you're trying to do as a Nigerian uh, nonprofit coach, Global Leaders Fellowship, so and so on and so forth. So just go through these. And you can take a look and see if any of these might help you achieve what your next big goal is. Someone else asked about travel fellowships and grants for small agri entrepreneurs. Um, now, something like agri entrepreneurs, again, that's a super, super sub discipline. I doubt that we have anything that uses the word agri entrepreneurship. Probably not. So that's that's where this is a situation where I say, you know, don't get too defined. But if you put in um, entrepreneurship, there are 74 fellowships in the database that are related to entrepreneurship. So that's not too, too many. I would actually suggest going through these and you can further filter by your citizenship, uh, where you want to go or maybe you're open. Um, but this is sort of how you can um, sort of narrow down. Now, if you're looking in agriculture, you can um, maybe you might want to put in science. You might want to put in technology, engineering, because it sort of touches on all of those things, and that will also kind of help you narrow down uh, STEM-related or agriculture-related fellowships that could be for somebody with your background. So uh, I suggest using those sort of um, profiles. And again, do take you know carve out thirty minutes or an hour to kind of go in the database and look through each opportunity because you never know what you might come across. And then uh, somebody had also asked me about doctoral research fellowships, a currently enrolled doctoral student. So if you are a currently enrolled doctoral student, certainly look in uh, doctoral study. And then, uh, uh, well, if you're studying entrepreneurship, there's one there for you. But you can put in your subdiscipline here. Now, again, if you're working on a really kind of super subdiscipline or niche topic, um, you know, for me, like I was studying, you know, I was doing disaster research. I'm not sure that there is any um, 
fellowships specifically for disaster research dissertations. However, I was also, I was really working in sort of the social psychology space. So if I put in um, psychology, so think broader, think broader disciplines, you know, there's fellowships then that fit into there. Um, NSF graduate research fellowship, these are for any kind of science, um, even social science fields, um, Center for Engaged Scholarship. I mean, these are much broader um, topics. So th they're looking for all sorts of different topics. So don't narrow your keyword search down too much or you might not find what you're looking for. So no matter what you're studying, try to think about kind of the broader words that it might fall under. Business, technology, science. Um, I mean, if you do science, there's gonna be all sorts of things that come up. There's 110 results. So um, just keep that in mind as you're, as you're thinking about and, and looking for your dissertation research fellowships. The other thing I wanna mention is of course, uh, in our articles, we also do a whole number, we do a lot of articles that are featuring, first of all, we feature, you know, former fellows and in interviews. We um, do fellowship lists. So, you know, one thing we had done was, um, you know, oh yeah, writing fellowships was a big one. Let me just go to that, it's quick. People were looking for like writing fellowships. And so we do these articles that um, also just help you to find and bookmark certain types of fellowships. So I would say in this keyword search up here, which will bring up both fellowship listings and articles, um, you should put in, you know, things like social entrepreneurship fellowships, writing fellowships, international fellowships. Those can be broader searches because you might find an article that is already um, compiled a list of fellowships you could be interested in looking at. And again, too, if you found a fellowship that you were, you know, really interested in, um, I did like, let's say the German Chancellor Fellowship. You could put that into the to the keyword search here, and you can see if have we done an interview with a fellow. Um, we did, so we had one with uh, Josh, and these articles are great because at the end he talks about his experience, what attracted him to the fellowship, but also at the end of every interview article, we ask for them to give their tips on how to apply and be competitive for the fellowship. So it's really worthwhile if you're seriously applying to a fellowship to look out for those articles and. Uh, and see what tips that they have for applying. Now, I've blabbed enough and I've, I've gone through some of the ideas for uh, fellowships and, and how you can find them. Let me just see if anyone has um, put any comments on the, the page here. Okay. And feel free to you know type in any questions into the chat box. Okay, so uh, Christina asked, how would you find grants for writing based on data already collected? Ooh, good question. Um, data already collected. So this would be, this would be, um, I guess if you're doing like a journal article or uh, I don't know if you're doing an academic journal article or you're thinking about maybe even writing a book, um, you, would, you would still look in writing fellowships, I think, because um, generally you're doing the writing, not the research part. Now, if you do a very broad writing um, search with the keyword writing, you'll get 92 results. Again, you can further um, narrow that down by putting in your citizenship, let's say your United States, um, your discipline, let's say you're writing in, I don't know, it could be, maybe it's a broader like political science or something, so you could do social sciences, and that will help you uh, narrow it down. One thing I should mention is that in the keyword bar, Unfortunately, uh, this is a little bit low tech. We can't do multiple keywords in the keyword bar. It doesn't have a Boolean search or anything like that. Hopefully that's something that we'll have in the future. But when you do put in writing, it, it has every single, all 44 on a single page so that you can also use your own computer's search function to maybe even do a separate one. So let's say you wanted to do a writing fellowship in uh, history what you could do is use your own keyword search. So on my Mac here, I'm doing command F that's bringing up this like search bar and I'll put in the word history. And then I can use that to do sort of a second level keyword search to find writing fellowships in history. Um, it just kind of helps narrow it down a little bit more quickly. You can uh, bookmark that if it looks interesting. Um, but as you can see, uh, it's mentioned 24 times. This one has four of those mentions. But yeah, that's probably the best way to find those things. But you know, if um, you write to me and you say, I'm looking specifically to write a book on this topic, I can also give you some ideas on how to find that kind of funding. 
All right. Oh yeah. She said she's writing a book. Yeah. And I should mention too, there's also uh, writing residencies that people love to find. So there's writing fellowships. I want to mention that we have a uh, artist, artist in residence, which usually people, this conjures up a, you know, a visual artist, but often it can be writers as well. So for example, um, there's a children's writers in residence program at the Boston public library who knew. Uh, so if you're a writer, this isn't, this isn't a artist in residence, it's a writer in residence. And some of these artists residency, quote unquote, the artists can be creative writing, even um, academic writing. So I would like take a look through some of those. Some of these um, really kind of sought after ones like the Bellagio residency, this one's in Italy. So these are people in humanities, social sciences, uh, other disciplines, and they're um, funded residencies for two to four weeks. So Christine, you could just, you know, go to Italy, take your data um, and, and have a beautiful two to four weeks working on your book as a way to uh, be focused there. So there's a couple, yeah, different things. So. If you're writing something, you're trying to write a book and you already have the data, it sounds like what the fellowship that you need really is for the time and the space and sort of the focus to do that. That would be sort of a residency. So you can even, let's see, if I say the word residency, that might even bring up um, some, uh, yeah, like the Terra Summer Residency. That's another key word that you can try. Um, for some of these are specifically to give people a place for quiet reflection, study, and focus on a single writing or artistic project. Okay, any other questions? Uh, feel free to, um, you know, post them in the in the chat here. And I'll, I'll just take a minute because I know sometimes it can take a few minutes. So I wanna mention too, some of you, most of you I think are here because you're in the academy. Um, we have a pro fellow Academy for people who are interested in, um, learning more about, uh, Oh, wait, you know what? I got to share that screen. Hold on. Let me just, um, share my screen. Just want to mention Profile Academy, but I'm having a hard time figuring out how to share my screen. Oh, back to me. <laughs> okay. I just want to show um, Profile Academy for those of you that may be watching who haven't done Profile Academy. Inside Profile Academy, this is now completely free. So you can come in and I'm going to be doing events like this, showing you how to find funding, um, doing short courses, webinars. We also offer uh, kind of more in-depth paid workshops throughout the year, uh, which will be listed in the events section. But, you know, you can um, connect here with all sorts of people, um, fellowship seekers, fellowship alumni, academics, award winners, you name it. So I'm really glad that you're here. Use it to the best of your knowledge. If you um, feel like you're getting way too many emails, you can you can change your notification setting uh, here in uh, your settings. And uh, we look forward to seeing you inside. You'll see all sorts of interesting people. You can post a question anytime. Hey, I'm looking for this funding opportunity. What do you think? You can even message me directly. So with that, um, if there isn't any more questions, I'm just gonna check the YouTube page one more time to see if uh, there's any more questions. There was one more. So someone asked, what if I wanted to do research on the number of African American migrants to Ghana in recent history and the effect to culture? Ah, that's interesting. Well, you'd want to find um, a research fellowship in Africa. And uh, if I was going to share my screen here, let me try. Oh, that's not what I want to do. And I'm just trying to pull it back up. Hold on. Sorry, technical difficulties. Okay, here we go. Back to the database. So yes, yeah, so you wanted to you wanted to do. It sounds like a research project in Africa. So what I would do is put in fellowship location Africa. I would not suggest putting in the word Ghana just because there might not be specifically an award for Ghana. But um, let's say you wanted to do research 
maybe put that in and see what kind of opportunities. Now, these might be tagged as Africa because these are open research grants that where you can go to any country, so you're not bound by any certain location. So there's dissertation research grants, there's a multi-country research fellowship. Oh, this, for example, might be one that's of interest. So the multi-country uh, fellowship program is if you're doing advanced regional or trans-regional research in various um, topics. So although you'd be looking specifically at Ghana, it might be that you want to Maybe you wanted to do just the region in general about um, migrants to that area. This could be an interesting award that you apply to that. Um, for this, you either have to be a PhD student or have already earned your PhD. So, um, so you just have to see if you're eligible for that. But likewise, you know, um, look through these opportunities to see where you might be able to apply. I mean, there's even research um, grants for undergraduates if you're an undergraduate. Um, they are, you know, research and innovation fellows where you can be placed abroad. Now, the Fulbright program is another way um, to do research in Africa. Now, I'm not quite sure what country you're from, but if you were a U.S. citizen, you could go to one of 160 countries on a Fulbright award. I want to mention there's a lot of different Fulbright awards. So I'm just going to put in the word Fulbright, get this out of here. Um, there's a lot of different types of Fulbright awards, both for U.S. citizens and for non-U.S. citizens coming to the U.S., so I would also encourage any of you thinking about international work of any sort to look through the Fulbright Awards um, and then you can put in your citizenship. So if you're U.S., you can put in that and see, you know, the 30 different Fulbright programs that you can be eligible for. Uh, likewise, if you were coming from Ghana going and wanted to go to the U.S., uh, you can put in, oh, this is not typing now. Let me just put in uh, Afghanistan. You could look at the, there's three different programs here for uh, non-U.S. citizens coming to the U.S. So you can take a look at that. All right, I'll take one last look at the chat and see if there's any other questions about finding fellowships. Okay, well, we're a little bit past time, and so I'm going to wrap this up here. But um, let me uh, just, again, if you have any questions in ProFellow Academy about finding fellowships, um, for a certain type of goal or award, just send me a message or post one in the group. Okay, thanks so much, everyone.